Hey there, awesome TurboTax accountants. Mark Bronke here. This is video one for case number two. This is continuing on and it's going to make it a little more complicated than case one because this time we're going to add a spouse and some dependent children. We're also going to uh, throw a home mortgage in there and the deductions that uh, taxpayers can take when they own a home. I have some charitable contributions and then we're going to explore different types of credits, child care credits, um, education credits, and some estimated payments, uh, which is not really a credit. It's, uh, it's quarterly payments. We'll get into that. So let's get started. This is the uh, case 2-1 and the uh, taxpayer, I've got a handout for you. Taxpayer is Horace Silver and his wife Marion and children Herbie and Ella. So we're going to start a new return. Which is taking a while. And we're going to continue without transferring. First name is Horace. Occupation, manager. No U.S. Armed Services. And the zip code is 90803. California resident for the whole year, yes. Lived in California all year. And Horace's birth date is August 14, 1974. No one can complain can claim me as a dependent. And none of the above. Horace is married and wants to file with the spouse. Spouse's first name is Marion. And Marion is a teacher and did not serve in the armed forces. Was a resident of California and lived in California all year long. Marion's birth date is June 29th, 1977. And no one can claim Marion as a dependent. The issue here for this, for both Horace and Marion, is if someone else can claim you as a dependent, you can't claim yourself. Uh, that's fairly rare, but it does happen. None of the above. Didn't make money in any other states. This applies in places like New York, where people live in New Jersey. They work in New York. Uh, we don't have that issue here. I guess if we were in, um, like, state line and we worked in Vegas, you know, technically you live in California, but work in Nevada. That would be an issue, but it's not here. Do you have children? Yes, we do. My child. First name of the child is Herbie Silver. And the birth date is 5-30-2011. This is... Horace's son. And 
Herbie lived with, with Horace the whole year long. He is not disabled and did not pass away. And these uh, Horace, both Horace and Marion are the legal parents. And no, Herbie did not pay for more than half of his living expenses, as most children don't. And um, no. By the way, any time you get something, and I haven't specifically said, just answer no. Okay, we got another dependent. This one is Horace's child, and this is Ella Silver. And Ella's birth date is 11, 20, 13. Ella is the daughter, and none of the above. Ella is a U.S. citizen and lived with us the whole year and did not pass away or, or is disabled. And Ella also is Horace and Marion's child. Ella did not pay for more than half of her living expenses. And she's only six years old. And no... Another relative didn't live in the home and help support her. Okay, so we've got uh, the two dependents in, and we're done with that part. So we are going to be filing married filing jointly, which is correct. Married filing separately is a very high tax uh, bracket to be in, so most people would be better off married filing jointly. And so I'm going to pause the video and put in this information. And then continue. Same thing here. I'll pause and um, put this information in. By the magic, there it is. And we'll press continue and then we have social security numbers for all four again I will uh, put this in okay so I've got the social security numbers in so we'll go continue it's going to give us a summary check the information make sure it's all okay with the handout and then continue Continue. And we've got um, W-2s for both Horace and Marion. So we'll work on Horace's first. And this is uh, similar to what we did in case one. So I'll pause the video, put Horace's in, and then be, be back in a minute. Okay, so I have input Horace's W-2 information. And this is the screen where I did it. Put in his employer information. I put in the wage information. And then the state tax is down below. Don't forget to check the box that says retirement plan. And then continue. None of the above. And we have another W-2 to enter, so I'll say yes. And this time, we're going to put in Marion's W-2. So I will enter Marion's W-2, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I put in the... W-2 information for Marion. She works for the Horseman School and does not have retirement plan or any sort of W, um, sorry, 401k. And then I put in the state wages down below here. 
so everything should be there and I will click continue confirm the amounts match 45 544 32 and 1465 32 that's confirmed none of the above And that's it for W-2s. So our total wages should be 152,398,47. And the federal tax due at this point is 7,136. That's your check figure for now. So let's uh, go ahead and put in the uh, alimony. We're done with this and take us to deductions and credits. Continue. Did not control a foreign bank account. Was not affected by the natural disasters. And we did not sell, exchange any virtual currencies. All right, so now we're going to go into deductions and credits. We've done this before, and the alimony is down at the bottom. Under other deductions and credits, alimony paid. Again, this is something that we had in our last case, so this should be fairly straightforward. And the answer is yes. I'm going to pause the video. I'll put in the information for Judy Garland, the ex-wife of Horace. And our new check figure is federal tax due of 1468. And we will continue. Done. Continue. And then we will go back and go to wages and income. I'll choose what I work on and we'll go down and we'll put in the business income, which is on the top. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. It's um, on page two towards the bottom. This is a craft business that Marion has. So if we go down to... Business income, we've got the Schedule C. Again, very, very similar to what we did in case one. So this is just more practice. We'll start that. Did you have income expenses for a business? Yes. And we'll continue in TurboTax Deluxe. The business is a craft. Uh, we'll just call it crafts. Uh, use my name as the name of the business and my business address. No employer ID. The business code is 454930. Cash method. Yes, played an active role. And we're going to enter the information ourselves. No 1099s. None of these apply. No 1099 NEC income. And no 1099 miscellaneous income. Okay, so I'm going to st pause the video. I'm going to put this information in. And uh, again, same same process that we did in, in case number one. And I'll be right back. Okay, so I have input all the income, the purchases, and the change in inventory, the beginning and ending balance of inventory. And I've also added uh, these expenses here, business expenses. Again, same process we did in case number one. 
So now I'm going to click continue. There's no long-term care insurance. And there's no business expenses not yet reported. And none of these things apply to our craft business. And now we are done. Is this qualified business income? Yes. None of these things apply. And uh, no to this. There we go. We are getting... So here's our gross and net income for our craft business. And our federal tax due at this point is $3,099. $3,099. Okay, we'll stop the video there and continue on in video number two. I will see you then.